high-handed queen decides to put final nail to bury Sussex forever, causing their serial defeat. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry tried to break royal barriers as a couple working for the British monarchy. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex also wanted to do some things independently, but they were not allowed to do so. As a result, they decided to step down from their royal duties in 2020. Before Megxit, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle reportedly came up with the plan to sell Sussex royal merchandise for their supporters. The items would have ranged from t-shirts to bandanas. If the plans had pushed through, they wouldn't have been the only royals to sell products using their titles. However, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex failed to consult Queen Elizabeth regarding their plans. That's why the latter was forced to put her foot down. In his book Battle of the Brothers, author Robert Lacey claimed that, once again, Harry had totally failed to consult the Queen about a major initiative affecting his royal work and image, and the image of the crown as a whole. The family finally hit back. Bauer also claimed that the Queen was thrilled when she found out that Prince Harry was dating Markle, because they seemed like the perfect match. Elizabeth II had always had a soft spot for Harry, and she'd been delighted by the arrival of Meghan, whose personal energies seemed to complement her grandson so well. As head of the Commonwealth and reigning over an even more multicultural society in Britain, the Queen had especially welcomed the exciting new dimension that a mixed-race recruit brought to the Windsor identity. And as we shall all see later in the series, she herself had spotted when things were going wrong and had helped devise a strategy she firmly hoped would make things easier for the couple. However, there were some things that Queen Elizabeth refused to compromise on and at the top of a list was the authority of the Crown. By not disclosing their plans to market merchandise under their own royal trademark, Harry and Meghan had trespassed dangerously on that authority. To commercialise the crown required the crown's consent, and the Sussexes had not sought it. Prince Harry's highly anticipated memoir, billed as a book of raw, unflinching honesty, will be published in the new year. It's been announced. Harry's book is called Spare, a reference to the phrase the heir in the spare, and will be released globally on January the 10th. According to Omid Scobie, despite reports to the contrary, Prince Harry has not made any edits to the much-anticipated book in light of the Queen's death. He claimed that the event did not spark any last-minute rewrites or edits, as Harry completed the book's manuscript almost five months before the monarchy's passing. Prince Harry will, however, according to Scobie, acknowledge his grandmother's passing. In regards to the controversial title for Prince Harry's autobiography, Scobie claims that the title of Spare was the Prince's own idea and the decision to use the punchy title was made by Prince Harry early on in the process. Scobie explained that Harry's choice of title reflects how he's finally owning the term spare after a lifetime of being called it. He explained that the purpose of the spare is to be the resident scapegoat to protect the crown and higher ranking family members, and added that the book promises to be interesting as Prince Harry approaches such moments where he's had to rise to the job. No matter how carefully Harry shares the parts of his story involving others, there is still the very real risk of serious blowback from the institution and family. Palisades recently told me about the genuine fear amongst senior members that this book will cause irrevocable damage to reputations and relations. But for Harry, Spare's larger intention appears to make that risk worth taking.